Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to take a very first look at a brand new thing from Hollybro. Now this is something that will be out and available at the end of the month uh, but we've managed to get our hands on one to have a first look. Now this is the new Kakute. I don't know how you say that, hopefully that isn't butchering it too much. It's the new Kakute flight controller, it's the F4 all-in-one. Now we've looked at a couple of products from Hollybro already and some of the other flight controllers that they do have been very good. But this one is a little bit different and let me show you why. So it's an all-in-one board but it's an all-in-one board that does a couple of things that I've never seen on a board here yet. The first that you're probably spotting is that the IMU is actually mounted on foam. So the, the actual accelerometer itself is soft mounted. So the idea with that is that you don't have to soft mount the entire thing. Now I'm using a lot of these kind of things at the moment. These these kind of uh, vibration isolating mounts with the latest generation of flight controllers. And I'm finding I'm needing them more and more to stop those kind of twitchy little problems that you occasionally get, particularly in your. However, this Hollybro are claiming that you don't need to do that at all. Now it's an all-in-one board so it has a power distribution board built in so you connect the battery to these two terminals and uh, there's also those same connections at the bottom as well and then you have the connections for the plus and minus in each corner for the ESC. So this is really a quadcopter capable board and that's pretty standard for these all-in-one style flight controllers. You have the connections here for the receiver itself with both a 5 volt and a 3.3 volt out in case you want to run a spectrum satellite and then you have all of the connections out here for LED if I just put an insert a little bit closer up you can see it's all very nicely labeled then at the front and at the top of the side here we have the connections for the video because as well as being the power distribution board and an F4 base flight controller it also has a beta flight capable on-screen display built in as well. So this is kind of interesting. And I wanted to just quickly show you this thing um, and show you what it looks like in beta flight. Because not only is it one of the first boards I've ever seen with this kind of vibration isolated IMU, which I think is a blooming great idea actually, uh, but it's also one that when I went to beta flight and had a look around, gave me a little bit of a surprise too. So let me just show you what this looks like when you plug it into beta flight. Uh, two LEDs on the board. Well, green is usually means it's happy and thinks it's reasonably level. And then you have a blue light on there as well. That blue light will flash when it thinks that it is actually not level. So if I just show you the beta flight images. So here we are in the standard connection uh, with the standard setup pieces looking pretty solid. When the board is flat, it's reading as flat. Uh, nothing in the data flash. This doesn't have an SD card for the data flash. It's an onboard one. I don't think that's a particular problem. I'm guessing they're just running out of space on this thing. Uh, so if we go back to the desk very briefly, you can see that it's uh, protruding very slightly. So the way this is supposed to be installed in your quad is that way around. So this is the right hand side of the quad, this is the back, front and left and the power connections go onto the back which I quite like um, and you can see here you got a little arrow uh, but you can s hopefully see that uh, it just protrudes very slightly front and back uh, just outside the standard kind of mounting holes. If we jump back to our friend Beta Flight and if I just click through the tabs here is how the ports are set up Interesting here, the uh, USB VCP port is set to MSP, which is pretty standard. But if you look at the other ports that are available, UART 1, 3, and 6. UART 3 is the one that's presented at the side for the receiver. And if you see in a second, it's also set up for SBUS. And uh, UART 1 is set up for smart port telemetry. And UART 6, interestingly, is set up for IRC TRAMP. Now, we looked at the TRAMP pieces a couple of weeks ago and that allows you to through the beta flight on screen display to configure things like the power settings the frequency the band that you're using all without touching anything all through the sticks on your transmitter if we go next into configuration by default it's coming supplied as a quad x one shot 125 but as we roll down you'll see that it is 
by default set up for an S bus receiver, which let's be honest, it's majority of what we're using today. Battery voltage and current sensors are both turned on, which you'd expect. It has an 8 kilohertz gyro update frequency, although if we check what it actually says in the specs, it's talking it can do up to 32 kilohertz, which is pretty impressive. And then down at the bottom, it's got the telemetry output turned on, which is what we'd need for the smart port stuff anyway. Black box is turned on, and also the on-screen display is activated too. Things like LED aren't. If we continue our way through, pretty standard PID tuning stuff. There's actually mode set up here by default. Uh, so the arming switch is set to auxiliary one. Auxiliary two is the mode switch. So in the bottom position, it's rate mode with air mode turned on. Middle position is just good old rate mode. And then the top position, it's horizon. And then we have the on-screen display, that's how it's laid out. And this is very different from a vanilla install of Betaflight. So the last thing I did, which is the other surprise that I got, went in the CLI, asked it what version was running. And the version it came back with was Betaflight 3.2. Now, Betaflight 3.2, as I'm recording this video, isn't out. And if we actually check the GitHub repository, we can see the latest and greatest version is 3.1.7. And actually, 3.2 isn't out to the end of October. So this is coming with a pre-release version of Beta Flight, so just be careful of that. So just wanted to kind of show you this little guy, because this is a really interesting flight controller. It's the first thing I've ever seen with Beta Flight 3.2 on it, and it's the first one I've ever seen where they thought about the fact that vibration isolating the IMU was a good idea. A couple of other quick specs before we finish the video. The IMU on here is the ICM20689 connected via the SPI bus. That should work reasonably well. Uh, it has those three hardware UARTs, the 1, 3 and 6 that we just looked at. 128 Mbit data flash. Dimensions are 35 by 43 by 7 millimeters. Standard 30 by 5 millimeter mounting holes and it's about 7 grams in weight. So I'm interested to see how this performs when we actually get it in a craft and give it a go. But I thought it was unusual enough to warrant a first look video so you can see what this thing actually looked like. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists, so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.